So let me start with the basics of that. What is Git? Why I'm explaining Git and not something else? Let me take take up that, and then we can take it up forward. Okay. So actually, Git is used for version control. Version control in the sense codes control. So obviously, you might know. Let's say now a brief well a brief in the sense let's say take take an example let's say you are working on one piece of code and that one piece of code is one microservice let's say now understand instead of let's say one microservice you are just writing down a code for order management system okay so you are working in three files file name a file name b and file name c in that order management system now obviously one folder structure would be there different different files would be there that you know simply right some other guy is there he is also working on order management system but he is working on three different files or four three to four files which is like p q r and s okay when you two guys are working upon two different kind of uh we get what we can say files a line of code what happens is let's say your code goes into production first that works perfectly fine now this guy when he wants to put his production into code that is also fine what will happen what should happen is that so generally what happens is that let's say order management system has 100 files and for 100 files you are creating some bunch say a zip file just consider it as hypothetical example zip file now that zip file you are putting into server generally it is not a zip file i'm just taking an example okay now this you are putting into server and there server you are extracting and create creating an executable file and running on some port let's say 8080 so your website is running on this server okay in this way deployment let's say your your team is doing so what happens is that you have 97 files of date let's say 1st july okay and today let's say on 2nd july you have written or you have updated this three file so for all these changes you create and you put it into this zip file and you do the deployment okay now this guy started working with you so he will have a b and c's old copy right so because let's say you have changed some 10 lines of code over here in this abc file and then you have deployed but this guy has old copy of abc he has done changes into pqrs and after the changes into pqrs if he does the zip file of this what will happen it will have the new file of pqrs of 27 and abc will be of older file which comes into rest of 96 files and then if he deploys this project your changes are overwritten by this understood this flow those who have not used git specially right so in order to avoid such kind of situation in real world scenario what we can do one thing is that that whenever someone does any changes into file he'll say to everyone let's say he has 15 team members which kind of protocol it is being called okay we'll take it up in networking part well just an introduction of networking not much but he'll tell or he'll broadcast to everyone that hey i have done this three file so if anyone is using my project order management system please update this file so if this guy updates his files this is properly fine what if he forgets because this tasks are manually what if he forgets or what if he missed this email communication then again this kind of issue happens so such kind of process we can do automatically something like let's say if i have some system something like this let's say i have 
just like database, just like database. I have one folder into just consider it as in similarity with DB. So you have stored a DB somewhere, hosted DB somewhere, right? In a same way, this folder is hosted somewhere. Now, when I say hosted somewhere, that means what? Just like your Google Drive. You have created the folder somewhere in Google Drive. And from that Google Drive, you can download your photos from your mobile, on your laptop, or if your login ID is available with your friend or family members, they can also see your photograph, right? And they can download it. Now, the same kind of structure, let's say, just understand that not in Google Drive, but somewhere you have created a folder which is shareable across the whole team of order management system. Let's say you have created like that. Now you have updated A and B file. And this A and B file, when you complete it, you'll put it again back into the same folder. Now this guy, he was working on P and Q file. When he'll complete this, his coding into P and Q file, he'll put it down over here. Anytime when you want to do deployment, you will take a copy of this latest folder and you'll do the zip. I'm just giving a hypothetical example. You will zip it and you will put it into server on some 8080 executable uh, port and it starts running. Your website starts running. So then such kind of disparity won't happen. Make sense? Such kind of disparity won't happen so far clear those who have not used git for those this is the introductory session why git is introduced so far clear with git git in the sense the repo part so this is called your rep and understand that where where you are hosting is a git website kind of a git folder structure and the software that you use for doing all these things is also called git Okay, so that is for versioning control. As someone mentioned, this is called versioning control means what? When you are started writing out down code for A and B file, your version one will be created and then you'll merge with the main, main code. And then when you when someone else is working on some, some other files, version two will be created and it will be put back to the same folder. In this way, generally, git works in phenomena in, in in just an idea okay this was the idea to create git so that all these issues can be avoided and automated so far clear so that I'll, I'll start with the next part what are the git commands and in which way the git will be working and all that things what are can you say in git like only code or different yes so photos. yes so in git you can put everything it's just like just like as i said google photos is for photos it's not like that just like s3 file system is there right it's just like a file system you can put photos you can put javascript you can put executable files you can put anything okay. generally really people use it for code why because the the what you can say the cost of git is very much higher compared to some other ones so photographs and all the things generally we do not put it with together but let's say if you want to put as part of your project website let's say the header is there or something is there right so that if you want to put you can put but it just will be slower for your repository that's first thing and second thing is that key distributed design it won't be considering so in as part of distributed design this such kind of structure where everything is there into one git folder it it won't be created so that's why generally people do not put in industry all the code there all the code in the sense code javascript html everything they do not put everything into just one folder or one git repo i'll cover that part why okay but this is the gist that in this way, 
some piece of code you can put it into folder and that folder is hosted and shared across your team members so that that kind of issues which we cover doesn't happen and that hosting's hosting is available by git so git website is there and git tool is also there so that the, the software or the tool that you have to use is git clear yeah, so any code which is uh, which can be reused again for example a person has worked on the same project which we are currently working on so we can use their code as well from git yes to implement data in our project yes you can okay, it will be uh, on everyone can see that code or is it for specific group of people on this no, as I said, with just like, like as I as I said, as I said, the Google Photos you want to share with some poor folks, right? Mm. Let's say you are creating some your itinerary for either let's say itinerary or let's say some trip photos. The trip photos you'll share with your four of friends only, and mm. your some other trip photos you'll share with your family also. Right. In the same way, this folder, Git folder or Git repo, I would say now that you want to share with, share with your team members only. So let's say you are working, as I said, in order management system. So this Git repo should be downloadable and should be reused by order management system people only. Then it will be used for by order management system folks only. Mm -hmm. So that settings you can do there so that no one else outside your organization they can do so these are just no normal thing right that the way you're using normal um, you know industry yeah. tools right that that principles all already will be there for security purpose and all that things for that you don't have to worry much okay now going further how a repo and how different things will be taken consideration something like you have one repo and you are doing changes into file say a and b someone is also doing file changes in b and c then what will happen because now you have common file b and c so which one should be considered when you are merging the code so that's why the versioning happens here the version get created v1 so when fun one person completes his file changes and puts it over there in this in merge scenario when you are merging your changes into main repo it will say okay the latest is v1 okay previously the latest was v0 it will say okay v0 and v1 it is being updated it's perfectly fine now latest version is v1 now the person who is working on v b and c file he has taken a copy of v0 version and he is doing some changes in that and he is incremented v after v1 v2 and after increment he is merging this file to this repo so here it will understand that okay from v0 to v1 to v2 the code should be there but instead of that the changes are directly from v0 to v2 that means this file doesn't have the changes of v1 so it will not allow him to merge what it will say first take the latest copy of that so that your main repos code is from v1 so that the v's code has been changed on top of that you do your changes on top of that you do your changes and then sees changes and then if you will merge it will say okay latest version was v1 he has also taken a base copy of v1 and on top of that he has created v2 so let's merge that code so in that way when you are working with same file with between two different people at two different time or same time such versioning control can be taken care of now this is just a hypothetical examples that in this way git will work now we'll understand in which way all the scenarios with git can be implemented okay so for that let me take an example or i would say 
a simple simple scenario let's say you have order management systems repo so i'm giving name as git repo and repo name is order management system okay now the main version main version of the code is called master okay consider it it as a trunk of a tree which is a base of a tree any new code that you are working upon so let's say you want to work upon your local system right so what you have to do you have to take a copy of your master so this is in git website okay this is in git version projects with team and in this project we all are worked on same or different file at a time git automatically checks changes of the code and then merge file with master repo it doesn't automatically check when you push your changes into master branch after creating pr then and only then it merges but yeah it checks all that things and it creates conflict whenever it is there so that conflict scenario i have explained in a situation hypothetical situation when conflict will happen now for the same one i'll be taking example with the code one code in the sense what are the nomenclature for git something like this is called master branch so this is called master code or it is used as master branch of the code main branch of the tree i would say something like that so this is the main code it is called master code and it is into remote system right it is remotely used and remotely shared so that's why it is called remote master branch from there into your local machine let's say i'm using my laptop okay so on local laptop i have to take up the master branch so all that code i'll fetch it up over here into my master branch once i have taken it up into my master branch what i have to do let's say i'm doing some changes into login page for example from previous authentication i am using now oauth2 okay so previously we were using some authentication now from that i have updated the library for oauth2 consider that previously we were using oauth1 just an example hypothetical example okay so from master branch just like tree a two different branches or few more different branches gets created i have to create my code changes branch so from master branch i'll create new branch of my code which is like let's say login change so my branch name is login underscore change now in this i'll change the file of login dot let's say php so in login dot php i have done the changes okay someone else also would be doing code changes into his local setup so from local setup from that same master branch let's say we give the version let's say v0 and he also has v0 now he some he does some changes into in order management systems return flow so he creates a new branch and his branch name is return flow and he is doing changes into return dot php just an example now when i push my changes when i say i have to push my changes of login php into main branch so to do that in real world scenario what you do is you create a pull request so that pull request says what that your login.php was previously this in v0 and your login.php in this version v1 is this now your tech lead or manager will approve this change that okay whatever change you have done is perfectly fine when he approves your changes this change will get pushed after the mass, uh, pull request is completed this changes will get pushed into remote branch so remote branch 
now latest version will become v1 and in that the latest code of login php will be there now when this guy wants to create a pr or i would say pull request what happens is he will have a difference between v0 sorry v1 of return.php and v2 dot return.php now in v1 if you see we haven't touched the return.php so it's fine whatever the existing version of v0 return.php will be there that will be compared but at the end once the codes are approved this pr also will go into master branch now here git will understand that in this v0 v1 and v2 even though it is coming from v0 to v2 jumping from v0 to v1 rather than from v1 there is no change into return.php so the so someone else he said ki git automatically checks the difference between the files so if this file and this file were two different files or in this pull request and the other pull request which is getting merged into master branch if this both have different set of files it will automatically checks that there is no some issue for merging it it will directly merge this into master branch and if let's say this guy also worked on return.php and login.php say for example for some function or some something he has used it then git will throw error because then there is a conflict of file why because in v1 the login.php was different and the one which he has used for creating a code on top of that v0 on top of that he would have created v2 so there the changes are much different so that's why git will throw error by telling that hey take up the latest master of that and then do the changes so what he has to do is he has to take up the latest master all the master's code he has to put it into return flow and then he need to start working upon that so that is called conflict that is called merge conflict so when he wanted to merge his code changes from local branch to remote branch merge conflict happened because someone did the changes on the file previously and that's why this code changes via master branch he has to take up into his branch so he will take the latest copy of master and those master changes again he'll put it into return flow his branch and on top of that whatever the changes he wants to do he'll do so that the version will be now v1 and then if he wants to merge it he'll we will uh, git will understand that okay whatever the previous login.php changes were there v1 on top of that he is doing v2 so allow that then merge conflict won't happen so in this way the merging scenario with merge conflict or without merge conflict is being handled with git now we'll see some code for that code in the sense something like uh, what we can say commands for that okay so when you want to let's say you have installed git into your local setup when you wants to start a project let's say new code base you are creating you have to write it down git in it so that means it will write some code and it will create a bunch which is executable or master branch into your system and that folder will be a git folder so let's say that folder you are using for let's say for example as we have taken that folder name is order management system so you have writing you are writing order management code okay so in this all the structure of your code will be coming up and it will be created as master branch okay so so whatever you have used right that will come it up as on order management system it will come it up as master branch now let's say if you see git 
branch it will show you that in which branch you are so it will say master branch once you initialize the git into your so git branch is to show or to find it out in which branch you are that is git branch now you want to create something new branch of your own from the master branch correct so what you can do git branch what was the command it is git branch check out. Uh, b no uh, check out so git check out uh, ch no b git check out check out in the sense create new branch b and branch name so with this you will create new branch from existing one so existing ones means what so existing ones means you are in your local machine on master branch when you command this one checkout minus b a new branch will get created from existing master branch if you are now doing something like this let's say okay after that let's say you are doing something like this git branch it will give you your branch name so let's example branch name i'm take uh, taking as return flow okay so return flow i'm doing then if you do git branch it will give you return flow now if you create a new branch again out of this let's say login flow then what will happen it will create a new branch login flow from return flow so let's say in between this two let's say you have done some code changes in let's say 10 files those 10 files code changes will come into this as well because on top of that you have created new branch got it so with this new branch creation can be created understood now once a branch is created what we do we do some code changes into your branch and then what you do you have to store these changes what happens let's say you are writing down the code and your machine suddenly restarts let's say the power goes off you are working on desktop or let's say laptop battery dies or something like that happen your code will be vanished because such kind of incident can happen what you need to do is whatever you have done changes so far and it is working perfectly fine you need to store them so just like control s save file okay just like control s you are doing local uh, changes which are being done and you want to save it you can do git commit m with message so let's say in order management systems return flow one api change so you can write something like this return api function completed so this is your for your purpose you can see that what part you have completed now suddenly just after this commit add commit this laptop gets crashed then also in your local whatever the changes you have done it will be persisted in your local not on the remote branch to do into remote branch you need to git push so when you do git push what will happen in remote machine you had master branch from master branch you have created return branch return let's say flow okay now that return flow so first of all let me erase everything so what happens in remote machine you had master branch that master branch you have taken into local branch local machine local master and from local you have created new branch return flow now in remote machine there is no return flow created because you haven't right so in this whatever the code changes you do it will be into your local machine only whenever this code is completed right this copy of this your branch 
that you want to update into remote branch as well so that in case your laptop crashes or on top of your changes someone wants to do his changes for testing purpose or something like that so your branch you want to share at that time this branch which is in remote will be useful so you do what you commit your changes and you push your changes into master branch now not master branch remote branch so in remote also this kind of flow will get created a return flow so new branch in remote also will get created now if something happens to your machine it's fine or you want someone else to start working on this file let's say you are working, you are leaving company and someone will start working upon this return flow that also will be feasible so in that way when you push your change this thing happens so for pushing you have command called git push so in with that a new branch from the master in remote will get created now in between that there is one step which is git add so that will come when i'll tell you so that will come when let's say you have done changes into 10 files now out of the 10 files one file is temporary file what is this temporary file sometimes local settings so in remote code your uh, port is different and your local machine your port is different so some local settings you need to do changes so some files you don't have to push it into master branch okay so for that what you do is you select only those changes that or those files that should go into remote or the main branch so to do that you need to do git add now here you'll do file name something like a.php comma or space b.php and so on all the file name that you want to send for changes that you can do or save for changes that you can do git add and if you want to add all the file you can just say git add all once you do that and then you commit it commit is just like a saving then you just commit it and push it what will happen is in git in master branch of your remote from that a new branch will be created in remote with your changes of these nine files whatever the changes you have done so in case your laptop crashes you're working on different laptop someone else wants to start working on your branch he can do directly from this branch he'll do check out that branch and he can start working upon that make sense now this is normal scenarios what if the merge conflict happens so whenever the merge conflict happens what happens is that let's say out of this 10 files few files are already changed into master branch so while doing this code change let's say git push git will throw error that merge conflict in two files it will show something like this so these two files are something like let's say a.php and b.php what you have to do you have to open so first what you need to do first of all in order to such kind of thing doesn't happen merge conflict doesn't happen to do that what you need to do that's first thing that we will understand and if merge conflict happens then what you'll do that also we'll understand so when you are actually working in industry what you need to do every day or every week generally or when you see that in your teams channel or in your zoom channel group channel or slack channel someone say Ki, hey i have done changes into this repository what you need to do whatever the changes that you are doing first of all commit it when i say commit it save it okay commit your 
changes in let's say the return flow branch whatever the branch your branch okay so i'm just giving a name as your branch your changes into your branch then do something like this git check out master so now you are going into master branch then jit pull origin master so you are taking the fresh copy of master branch what you are doing is let me show you with a code or, or a design as i was telling that in remote you have master branch someone did changes over here and you are also doing the same changes on the same file or similar kind of changes in the same file what you have to do you have to take a fresh copy of master branch into your local so that instead of v0 the new version v1 will come right so you can do git pull origin so with that this step will happen the latest version of master branch will come into your then git mer then git check out your branch name your branch name was let's say return flow so now you are going into your branch and what you are doing git merge master so with this step what will happen in your local okay so i'm just re reverting this or so before that this also happen hmm. what happens let's say in your remote branch not not remote let's say local branch from remote v1 has come up master branch right so in local you have master branch and from master you have return flow branch you have done all the changes into your file return flow and latest branch you have kept it up latest code changes you have kept it up into master branch those master branch changes you want to put it into this file right login.php just like example let's say you did also login.php someone also did login.php so those changes of someone you want to put it into your branch so what you will do as i said key there it is hmm. you will check out your branch name and then you'll do git merge so this step will happen that from local master branch all the changes will come into your code base and then you can start working on your existing code so that latest fresh copy of the latest code you have and then whenever you complete you follow this step git add git commit and git push merge conflict won't come let's say still merge conflict came up okay meanwhile before that just take a snapshot of this all commands or you can find those commands outside as well but understand the scenario where and when these commands are being used okay so if you want to take a snapshot i'm just waiting for a minute you can take a snapshot or you can uh, write it down everything in your book or something that you're using okay now uh, can you please just explain this again this the last part get clarified part uh so first of all merge conflict you understood what is merge conflict and why it is yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, so the same thing whenever the merge conflict happens so merge conflict happens when whenever you want to push your changes which is outdated right so let's say as i say ki someone did changes into login.php before you so you have version v0 as a base he has also version v0 as a base he has completed his version v0 and he has created new version v1 on top of that of login.php so your changes should also be on v1.p v1 version not on v0 but if you do not rebase this structure is called rebase of master if you do not rebase from master and you directly push into master must get will throw error ki you are working on v0 while the latest version is v1 so your changes should be on v1 not on v0 and that's why it will throw error that there is a merge conflict because the two files or one file that someone else already updated and your version was older version 
got it or should i again once more try it out yeah i got it thank you right so merge conflict happened because you were working upon older version now if you rebase this is called rebase of master so if you rebase master and your branch conflict generally doesn't happen let's say conflict still happen i'll tell you the scenario in rebase also conflict can happen okay but in case let's say first scenario happy go lucky scenario this doesn't happen and you pushed your changes into master branch and everything work fine what if you did not rebase master and the merge conflict happen then what will happen so whenever the merge conflict happens okay the git will store both the changes into your file what are those let me uh, first of all take an example and then uh, show you on the internet matlab in the file structure so for example in your a.php okay there is function called uh, login login auth okay so this is a function this is a hypothetical code in that let's say you have done some line of changes a line or let's say x code y code and z code something you have changed existingly that means some person who has also done the changes into same file his code code changes are something like this p say for example this is his change the one which is already pushed into master branch and this is your change because previously this p was not there okay so let's say he he did not have z you have z new change because in v0 only this were there so v0 copy has this one someone who has pushed this changes has v1 and you are right now working upon this v2 and this is your changes so it will throw error that merge conflict has happened and when you open your file in merge conflict you can see that something like this that from top top in the sense head in the sense remote branch your changes are like this and some garbage number will be there something like this and you are doing this changes computer will show this kind of error when you open this file because merge conflict has happened into a.php and b.php so when you open a.php you can see this kind of structure at many places or at at least one place wherever such kind of changes are there so that is a difference into code it can be same function it can be different function as well now you need to resolve the conflict when i say resolve the conflict what it does it mean by resolving a conflict you have to understand that hey previously some person so previously code was just x and y line you have added z line someone added p line you need to talk with that guy who have added p line and you need to understand p line is necessary or z line is necessary or line of codes multiple lines or whatever the code bracket or bunch of code you understand that okay both are necessary let's say then in your code changes you have to do something like this p and z both because p is also necessary some condition he has put and z is also new condition that you have put both are necessary so after this you will again save your changes commit and then push when you push must uh, what you can say remote branch will understand that hey the previous changes are already there and your changes are also there so that's why do not throw error the conflict is resolved in same process you need to do for a and b both and then you need to complete the latest code same thing will you will have to do whenever you do rebase and in rebase also it says that merge conflict happen 
it can happen right because when you are doing rebase it may happen that your changes and some other person's changes are in same file and also in same for function it may happen then at the time of rebase also merge conflict can happen whenever merge conflict happens you have to open that files which is being prompted by git and those files you need to open check where the conflicts are as i said the conflicts will be visible as head something like this so you can do control shift f malab all folders and check whether such kind of design this such kind of pattern is there or not and then you can find it out and resolve it uh, so rebase is something like i didn't understand rebase so as per my from the master branch the the previous code that we you have i have written that you understood yes yes ha huh, that is called rebase so the rebase in the sense what we did is first of all you save your changes mm -hmm. okay whenever let's say every morning you are doing this or every week you are doing this or whenever you get intimation that in a same repository someone also did the changes at that time you are doing this Mm -hmm. so you save save your changes and when i say save you commit and do not uh, and you push into into your in remote branch so this is clear how to yes. push into remote branch okay yes, yes. this is you did then in local machine what you do git check out master so you are no you are now going into which branch to work master branch to work master. then you are to taking as git pull origin master or just git pull origin that means what it will do from remote machine matlab the the shareable folder of git whatever the latest code of master will be you had which version v0 v0 and in origin v1 has been there right so this v1 will be coming up into your local branch so local master has now what v1 okay now mm -hmm. you go to your branch git check out your branch and you do git merge master so the v1's changes will be now be there into your branch got it yeah so that is called yeah. rebase so git merge master that means like we are merging the uh, remote changes with our current changes exactly actually not remote changes your local master branch only yeah but that local branch or master branch you have just now taken from remote branch remote machine so whatever the latest code that is there that you are putting into your master branch and from local master branch you are putting the same changes changes into your branch and then you start working upon on top of that so yeah, in this case is what happens generally what happens let's say someone has already return this function okay instead of xy he has created p so what happens in your a or php also this code will come and then you will do write this function and then you do all the commit and push then merge conflict won't happen because yeah. git will understand that your version was v1 on top of that these changes are already there on top of that you are doing your changes and then you are doing all these things so it won't create merge conflict clear yeah, yeah so in this way merge conflict can be resolved and the git branching strategy can be used uh and rest of the things can be created oh. now from the your company's uh, what you can say ui okay generally git provides ui in which you can create pull request what is pull request with pull request your branch changes will go into master branch in remote so whatever changes you have done that has to be verified by someone let's say tech lead senior engineers and all that things right that changes someone verifies via pull request once a pull request is completed completed in the sense he'll approve once it is approved you can complete it that happens into git ui just one step thing is there you can check it out into ui okay let me find it out if such 
things are there. Let me open it. I'm just opening some uh, screenshot so that I can take it up and I'm trying to push it over here. So if this is clear, let me clear all my drawing. Okay. If it is not possible. Let me share the screen then. Hmm. Can you see uh, this Git, Git page? Yes, yes. Ah. So in UI, you can create a pull request like this. Okay. In your code, you can go and create a pull request. It will show a pop-up that, hey, you have pushed this branch, new branch. Want to create a pull request when you create yes on yes, it will show that, okay, from base master, all the changes from your branch to master branch, it will go. That pull request you want to create. So you can give a name of that pull request. You can address all the uh, things that what you have done into your branch. You can also show that, okay, this kind of testing I have done code coverage I have done, this test cases have completed, or let's say UI related changes you are doing, then the screenshot you can edit up over here, everything you can do over here in a description. Once you do the description and done, you can get a pull request. When you create a pull request, generally what happens is, let's say order management system you are working with, then your repo should be owned by your manager and tech lead. They will be by default reviewers. Or you can ask someone, let's say order management systems, some tech lead will be there or some other senior person is there, right? You can ask him to review your code. So you can assign a reviewers over here. Once a reviewing is done, you can complete this PR. So over here, once the review is done, you over here, the button will come, key PR you want to complete. When you complete the PR, this branch changes is if it is doing all the checks like reviewers have completed and all that things, then you can merge it into master. Okay. Yeah. It's a, as simple as that. So with the UI creation of PR pull request is simple where you can add. So because from the code, it can also be done, but generally when we create PR, you have to add all the text, right? like this kind of test cases have completed or screenshots of testing and all that thing. So that's why from UI only, it will be feasible. And that's why I have added those, I explained those changes. Okay. So this is the base of Git. Git is much more depth. You do reset, you can do reset head and so many things you can do, but that is too much in depth whenever some issue occurs. Okay. So that kind of things we are right now not taking it up whatever is right now necessary for you those things we are taking it up and head detach head and all the things which or move back to some different head and all the things versions that we'll have to do where someone or i'll whenever i'll take it up uh, what we can say uh, project part at that time we'll we'll cover it up Let's say in your local branch, let's say into your local branch, some change issue happens and you want to do something special with your Git branch at that time, we'll cover it up. Okay. With the example, when project will, will do. Okay. So with this generally, whatever should be done with Git is completed. Okay. We'll take a rest of 10 minutes. At 10 30 again, we'll be back. Okay. Okay. So, so far we have seen in this few sessions the main basics of code and the basics of Git, how to use Git. Right. Now, in today's session, we'll further move for the rest of the part of SQL and NoSQL of with which. With this, we'll just cover the basics. As I said, in depth, we will cover into design part as in a prerequisite of design. Right now, just an introduction we are creating. What with introduction will cover? With introduction, we'll cover what is normally the syntax of SQL. What are the joins? Where no SQL is used, or which kind of NoSQLs are there and why 
it is different from SQL and how? And in which kind of scenario, which one to use it? Such kind of introductory part will take it up. But when we do the low level design, what we'll do is that we'll take up some question, let's say design Google Calendar. Now with that, what we'll do is we'll actually design the schema that which kind of tables are necessary, which kind of normalization should be there, which kind of joins we need to think before such that uh, we can reduce the problems into API times and all that things or the query performance we can optimize all the things how to think through and then create a design that we will consider then then in the sense whenever we'll take up the design part so that then whenever we'll take it up the design part at that time it will be much more clear how to use this thing so right now just the fundamentals we will cover very basic fundamentals so that you will also have time to go through little bit more on your own or if you want to try it out few things you, you can try it out few things on your own right so all the fundamentals i'll start with sql and no sql and furthermore we'll move further okay now obviously as a uh, college graduate or as uh, experienced guy most of us would have used sql is there someone who has not used sql no one that don't know about how to use joints and all oh, uh, uh, sql command right okay so we'll quickly move towards part so what happens or what is a sql so sql is kind of a tabular data storage in which you can store the data something like if i give an example tabular just like an excel format you see you have the column name let's say id roll number example only roll number name and address of different different people you want to store your pupil you want to store so that is called column name and these all are rows something like id 1 2 it 22 roll number is let's say 31 and the name is let's say pqr and address is something so something like that you want to store then you can use sql in this way sql is generally used now to fetch the data because for any storage any storage just like as as we say he whatever the storage you are using let's say google photos get s3 or even db whatever storage you are using in normal life either in programming life of normal life you need only two operations generally two operations one is insert the objects into your remote desktop remote machine so that it will be stored or insert records into database so that it can be saved and second operation is fetch those so that it can be reused either you are storing photos and then you are fetching this, those again you are storing your code in git and you are fetching them you are storing some files into s3 you are fetching them you are storing some data into s3 d3 uh, database and fetching them these are the two main operations that people wants to do so first let's understand what is the fetching part and then once first we'll understand what is the insertion part so for fetch or read the data, you can use some syntax like this. Select column name or names from DB name. That's a simple syntax, correct? 
if I write, let's say select uh, ID, not ID, roll number, name from students. And also you can put condition where, where class equals to, let's say IT class equals to it so from the it is class i want to fetch all the roll numbers and name of all the students so with where you can put condition so if i say select c l t c t select column name from table name where condition so you can put condition and in this way you can fetch all the data in a simplistic way correct nothing to explain over here correct now insertion part insert into table name and you can give all the columns on which you need to add generally we give all the column names column one, column two, everything. And then we give all the values that you want to add. Something like value one, value two, and so on. Like this, you can insert. It's just a simplistic way, right? What more you can do with this DB? What all things you can perform? So something like this, you can perform. Something like once the data is there, generally, the main reason for the data is to retrieve the data and reuse it whenever we want to store it, whenever we want to process it. So we may want to process it in terms of order, some order we want to, that means we need some sorting, right? Merge with some other table, right? do some aggregation logic all things we can do correct what else we can do we can group by uh, so that we want to do <clears throat> so yeah group by is aggregation uh, i would say aggregation with a group by and also we want to do some pre-processed or i would say calculate data something like max some etc kind of thing we want to do all these things is everyone clear then we can skip and we can directly put into come to the joins and if no one if someone doesn't remember it we can directly we can quickly take the recap from college days or your working time does anyone is there anyone there who doesn't remember all these things SQL ka syntax for order by group by and all that things or should I just cover it up fast? Uh, can you cover it up fast? Sure. Yeah, sure. So we'll cover it up quickly on all of this. Okay, kind of on a syntax with the syntax, all the syntax and all that things. Okay, so <clears throat> so once we understand the select and insert conditions then on top of that all these other syntaxes or all these other thing we can we can do let's say for example i want to find it out some minimum and maximum calculate some data okay so you can do something like this select right max of marks from student table where role let's say role number is equal to 12 so all the 12 role number student so one student only will be there he will have the marks for multiple let's say subjects so all subjects mark will be fetched first okay so condition will happen something like this where all where the role number 12 is there for all subjects, the data will be fetched and on the marks table or the marks column, 
the maximum operation is carried out and out of those whatever the maximum that value will come so let's say the roll number 12 has scored maximum into physics let's say 98 so this 98 it will answer got it it's as simple as that right yeah you can also do like subject name so for whichever the maximum marks you have what subject name that also can be covered you can fetch it up also you can do something like this you can store it somewhere as this data or you can just return it as let's say uh, max marks so as works as alias so your data will come as max marks and 98 in a tabular format so in that way you can return that so with ease in that let's say you want to do something else instead of mean and max or something like that let's say you want to do something like uh, sum right so you can do select sum of marks as total marks from student table fair roll number is equal to 12. so for the roll number 12 all the rows will be first fetched and then on a marks column his all subjects mark will be done the summation in a simplistic way right the same way you can do count also if you want to find it out how many uh, subjects he has appeared into you can find it out the average as well all this kind of such things you can do okay so this calculation we have covered now let's understand the previous one which is like group by what uh, is hello group? yeah uh, just a doubt so all of these are um, you're giving the what it can do right you're not giving the syntax right i'm writing the syntax as well which is exact okay. syntax oh that's how it is okay yeah all right all right all right now let's say you want to do group by now group by when you want to do so something like this let's say if i give an example let's say you want to find it out the average marks of physics in whole class something like that you want to do when you want to group the all class data and then you want to find want to find the maximum amount of it then you want to find the average out of it something like that or let's say how many student appeared or how many students record is there for physics how many records are there for physics sorry for typo well, in speed it, it may happen okay how many let's say out of 100 students 35 appeared for physics and the rest of them did not appear you want to find it out how many appeared for physics examination whose scores are there that you want to find it out so for all such kind of aggregation we use group by and when we use generally group by we do all the possible sorting or uh, not sorting i would say all the possible uh, mathematical function aggregated functions as well will use with that so for example the aggregation function that I, we have used was count average sum all that things generally is being carried out along with group by without that also you can do as we have seen previously but with group by when you want to make sense of some data as i say some example let's say if i take select average marks i'm just finding out the average marks and uh, okay just an average marks let's say i want to find it out from student table where the class id or the class name equals to it so from the class of it 
let's say first year students are there who have the exam and subject name equals to HISI, HISI, CS, physics. So I want to find it out that of the class IT, those who have taken subject physics, what is the average mark of that student? So average mark in the sense of the summation of all divided by the count of count of them, right? So that average, if I want to find it out, that in the class of IT, those who have taken subject physics, what is the average mark of that? Let's say if I want to find it out, I can do that, right? But as I said, key, you can do with this or you can do with group by as well, right? So uh, where it is, you can put such kind of where conditions and also you can do group by on that by let's say, let's say uh, group by subject, group by subject name. So here, what will happen that based upon the group by where, let's say class name equals to IT, group by subject name. So for all the subject, the average marks, you will get it out. So let's say, you have a data of this semester or this year's result. And in that is of the branch IT, you want to find it out what is the average of everyone for every subject. So with this, you can find it out. So you're grouping by all the data with subject. So what happens is internally, everything, if I take an example of, let's say from the drawing, okay. What happens is, it aggregates all the data of all the subject internally into some in, uh, temporary table, like all the physics marks over here, all the English marks over here, all the maths mark over here, and let's say some other subject, say chemistry, all the marks over here. Then it performs aggregated function average on top of that and it creates an output then it generates a result that for physics average marks is let's say 38 for english average mark is 59 for maths average mark is let's say 22 and for chemistry average mark is let's say 44 so such kind of thing output it will generate in a tabular format but how it happens like this so group by performs such kind of operation in which it will group by the data first and then you can get the result whatever the aggregation function you want to apply on top of that if you don't want to apply any aggregation logic then also it's fine but generally we use group by only with the aggregation generally okay also, you can add if let's say the type of your data is something like you want some thing more, then you can add all this syntax over here, which is called order by marks. So you can get the result based upon the whatever the order by statement you want to do. If it is applicable, let's say over here, it is not applicable. So that's why I'm not, I was not writing this order by, but in this way, you can also sort your data with order by the data will come by default sorted. Let's say, for example, let's say I want to find it out from customer table some data that for for me how many customers are there from which country okay that i want to do then i can write down simply a syntax something like this select count 
of customer id and the country name of those from customer table where okay here i don't want to find on the condition or something like this i can do where is live equal to true that means customer is live okay customer is not something like when you close your subscription with netflix then they generally do soft delete they will just mark it as customer is live false so such kind of thing is not there customer is already present into your system he is doing live purchase his subscription is not ended okay or something like is subscription live then equals to true so all the live subscription customers only you want to find it out by the demography so for the demography you are doing group by country name so let's say you have a column name say country name in your table okay and so you are finding out all the customer counts and all that things and let's say you want to do order by as well that you do all the things but you do this data you send me this data based upon the order by country name so all this result will be returned by sorting out from the country now you want to do ascending order or descending order that you can specify after order by in which sort order you want to fetch the data simple so group by how the aggregation will work and along with aggregation how you can use the group by and sort by okay so in this way you can do the group by policy and also you can do some ordering as well if you don't want to do group by you can directly go for ordering as well something like this so you want to find it out customer id customer name and country name by in order of group country name so all the country names customers will come together then next country names and then the next country name so all the people from argentina or country starting with a all the customers will come first and then the next set of customers will come from the country say b some other country which which has an initial from b so in that way you can sort and you can fetch the data also if you don't want to use group by so with that also it's possible okay so ordering is also possible just like count is also possible without group by and with group by is also possible simple so these are few normal uh, scenarios in which the group by and all the things will work now let's understand about join what is join so join is a phenomena in which we are joining two tables so right now i'm just exam giving example of two you can do furthermore multiple joins as well but in order to understand this first let's understand simple two table join it may happen something like this let's say your database schema is something like this okay with a student example let's cover it up you have student id okay and student name in one table and in another table you have same student id and their address or let's say mark sheet so marks you have stored marks as well now what you want result is something like you want student id their name and their marks as well all these things three things you need combined so when you need such kind of result in which the result is combined from two tables like student id and name you are fetching from here and that should be checked from marks and those students whose data is there for student id and name those marks should be coming up so if you want to do something like this you can go with joins how many types of joins are there can anyone does anyone remember 
in a nutshell how many types of joints are there in a nutshell you have only four types of joint one is full joint you have inner joint you have left joint and you have right joint in a nutshell these are the four ones then inclusive exclusive outer joint inner joint right outer joint right inner joint all the things are there okay we'll understand with a simple diagram of those but these are in nutshell these are the joints so far clear when the joints are being used generally when you want to merge the result from two different tables now say example inner joint of our previous example let's let's find it out when you want to find the data which is there in between both the table so something like a intersection b so in mathematics in set we used to do this operation if you remember a intersection b so in a set of data you have some set of data in b some set of data is there whatever is the mutual data that you want for that you need you used to do a union b a intersection b not union a intersection b so the same phenomena applies over here a intersection b for inner join so if i apply something like this inner join on two tables student id the two tables are something like this student id and name next table name is student id and marks now if i apply inner join on this i'm not giving syntax okay i'm just giving logic if i do inner join on this the data will be let's say student id is over here 1 2 3 and over here is something like 1 2 4 so for one student there are many rows okay one 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 something like this for different different subjects okay and for two two also different different lines are there but for three there is no lines so that's why i have drawn something like this for student id 1 you have different set of lines for student id 2 you have different set of marks and student id 3 you have uh, student id 3 you don't have but student id 4 you have when you do inner join which result will come inner join means intersection between two now you need to specify on which table you want to do inner join what should be the condition so condition is the one which is common generally the id one so on id you do inner join and you find it out so at that time the result will come something like this name will come so student id is this name will come let's say name for the student a is let's say abc 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 will come his name is pqr so pqr 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 and whatever the marks are let's say over here marks and subject name are there so marks and subject names will come let's say physics and some marks maths and some marks chemistry and some marks here physics and some marks bio and some marks chemistry and some marks so in that way the join will give you this kind of result where intersection of this two student ids are there so far clear normal intersection correct so far clear now we'll see the syntax of inner join okay and then we'll discuss further okay so let me write it down over here you can do something like this select okay let's say name table is name table and another is marks table okay so we can do something like this nm dot id nm 
dot name and marks let's say mks dot subject name mks dot uh, marks right from student table okay now student name table as nm i have given name of the table as nm so that the long student name dot something i don't have to use inner join i am doing on different table inner join i am doing on different table what is that marks table from inner join on student marks as mks on on which column we have done that student id right so nm dot student id equals to mks dot let's say stu id over here there was something different stu id so with this kind of syntax you can create an inner join right in the inner joins example we have covered so far clear anyone have a doubt in this no okay so now if if the set and set example set of this example is clear to you then what i'll do is that i'll find it out one picture pictorial view of all the types of join and i'll share it with you okay give me a minute yeah we can see yeah so this we have just taken example that intersection of a right and intersection of b when you want to do at that time in terms of set theory if we understand then two sets are taken together and out of that whatever is common in between right this common subpart we are doing it as downloading part downloading in the sense we are fetching it from our sql and for that we have used some syntax something like this select star star in the sense everything will come instead of that we have seen a syntax in which we can do selection on top of that so select selected columns or star all the columns from a inner join b on a dot key and b dot key we have taken example of id in that case right student id right so in that way you can cover it up you can take it up uh, inner join in the same way let's understand simple full join so when we see full join all the data will be covered i'll take an example in a whiteboard that which kind of data will be covered but in terms of set theory if we understand this is a in a union b a union b then over here is uh, sorry a intersection b over here it is a union b all the data will come up all the data from both the table will be come up now if we understand the rest of the joins it's pretty simple in terms of understanding with set theory that if you just want to see the data from first table then you can do left join from second table then you can do right join right now if you want to do some exclusive data where left join is there but null is not present then which is like this is a full right a full outer join this is inclusive outer joins so in this if you do inclusive uh, outer join exclusive outer joins then exclusive data will come where some data is not present in the same way for right okay and such kind of outer full outer data join also you can do so as i told you that there are only four types of joins inner join outer join left join and right join then you can merge them and create multiple types of join something like exclusive outer join right join and left join or exclusive 
outer join as well okay now we'll understand in terms of the data which kind of data will come with which with what Okay. Uh, just a question. Like if you mentioned V dot V is null, then that value is not assigned in the previous statement. Like V dot V is equal to V dot V. No. So I'll I'll cover it up over here. That part. Okay. Simply. Okay. Uh, okay. Now, let's say you want to do left join. Let's understand first the left join. All the data of A should be coming up, but not B's. Then what you'll do? You'll do A left join on B. Syntax remains same. Okay, so I'm not reiterating it. Instead of inner join, it will be left. What will come up? It will show up the data something like this: one, one, one. And the marks in the output, okay. Two, 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 and the name and marks three, three, three. Name will be, let's say, DD, but his marks are not present. So marks will be empty. Now, if you see, there is no rows for three, so only single row for three will come. And the marks will be null. Subject name will be null. Now, if you want to put an exclusive condition on top of that, so then you are putting an exclusive condition, something like where B's ID, so student ID is not null. If such kind of condition is put, then this record won't be coming up. Why? Because three's ID is null over here in the join. Right. So when you join the data. Three's ID remains null, right? Because for three, there is no data in the B table. So when you put the data something like B dot student ID is not equal to null, such kind of condition when you put, then such kind of data only will be coming up. Correct. In the same way for outer zone, if you want a data something like this that you want one 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 two 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 okay then four 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 as well but the name is not present so name will come null but his marks were there so marks should be coming up so if you want such kind of data you can go for right turn okay and when you go for exclusive one, you can put a condition over here where this ID is not null in your join or the name is not null in your join, then this data won't be coming. Then you will think that, hey, in terms of inner join, exclusive join, the result is almost similar. Yes, with the sample data that we have taken, result is almost similar, but when you're doing star, when you're fetching all the data, all the column, it will be different, right? In first example, all the columns of A will come here. All the columns of B will come just like marks and rest of the thing. So the star column or the column count will make a difference over here. When you do exclusive count, when you're selecting only some columns to, to be visible, then inner join, right outer join or exclusive join may be producing the same data based upon the conditions but when you are doing star that means select star all the data you want to fetch then the right join inner join sorry means right exclusive join left exclusive join and inner join they all will produce different different data because the number of columns or the type of uh, the level of columns all will be different correct so now with this simple example, now it will be much more clear that which kind of data will be coming up. Is it or not? If I reshare now the same, what you can say, table or the picture, then it will be much more clear that which kind of data now we are fetching. As yes, we have taken some brief simple example. 
here only simple example of a dot key is null or b dot key is null is given you can do multiple conditions over here it's not like just you can give null or not null you can give multiple conditions and filter it out the data if you see the left join and left join name condition name remains same just the condition is added over here so if you put a restrictive condition some data should be filtered out then that kind of data will be coming up something like this a is all data and these data where b's data is null that also is coming up here that data you are filtering it out over here our previous example we were fetching it from name then from name you can put condition or in you know, id you can put a condition because id will be null in a join right because that id is not present into b so in that way you can simply understand okay so with this uh, we are halting we are stopping our session today